Good morning. morning. We offer a warm welcome to all who worship here on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost, October 1st. We joyfully welcome those who join us on the digital platform. May the Holy Spirit guide all of us as we worship together and hear Christ's call to pause and stop and listen for God's voice speaking to each of us. Our prayers and the comfort of our Christian faith are with the family of Ray Landis, as you know, beloved member of this congregation. Ray passed away last Sunday. His service of Christian burial was here on September 29th. We give thanks for his witness of faith, his labor of love in this congregation, and keep his wife Donna and their family in our prayers. Some other prayer concerns, Carolyn Caldwell is in the Penn State Health Hampton Medical Center. Uh, Carson Benner is at Geisinger under hospice care. And Nancy Arnold is in Kinkora, also receiving care. We keep each of them in our prayers. You notice the mortgage announcement. That's very good news. We believe there is a worship and music committee meeting tomorrow night at 7. So that's my, those are my announcements. Are there any others? Yes. Let's look to the president. Yes. Should I go ahead? Okay. Very good. I'll ask you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. We have a moment of silence to prepare for the words of our confession. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk the we have for other lives. For harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, we are already and always forgiven. Amen.
Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Victory for our God, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our first lesson today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? 
Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. We will read Psalm 25 responsibly by verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. The second lesson today is from Philippians chapter 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and tremblings. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with each other. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of their father? They said the first. 
Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe. This is the gospel of the Lord. This time, yes, the children's sermon. Okay, good morning. I love to see your that energy. Energy forever. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So I guess I will stand because I can see you better. So I have a a booklet. I'm, going to, I'm calling it a journal, and I'll explain what it is in just a minute. But on the front we have, and there's a bunch of different colors to pick um, right there, but I'm, I hope each one of you will take this. And this is the psalm today, or at least verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. So the message there that the psalmist is talking about is lifting our soul to God, and we lift our soul and put our trust to God in God by turning to God. And some of the ways we turn to God, you know, right now in worship. We had the hymn that talked about we're gathering here to praise and listen to God. So we, we turn to God and lift our soul to God in worship, in prayer, in acts of helping other people, and in as you live in have a day recognizing where God might be with you. So that's what a journal is. So this is totally blank. And some of you, you might write in this, you might color in it, you might draw in it. It's yours to do what, what you want with it. But my hope for you is that maybe sometime each day you'll take this and in it, think about when or how you experienced God in the day. It might have been that someone said a nice word to you. It might be that you said a nice word to someone else. It might be that the sun was out or it was raining. Whatever it is that helps you to see God, put it in here. Picture, words, um, other, other things to help you, I hope. Do what these lessons are about. These lessons are about turning to God and living in God's fullness. A journal is a good way to do that. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Please come up. They're all different colors. I think I have enough. And it all has the psalm on it. Yeah, and green and white and pink and everything. And blue. We got plenty of blue too, right? I figured all the blue would go. I'll get rid of that. I want blue. Okay. I got yellow. That yellow is very nice. That's very nice. I got blue. I like that. Thank you. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words that are spoken and how we listen be guided by the Holy Spirit and true to the Holy Gospel, that we indeed may pause and listen and be formed as we turn to you, and in turning to you, live abundantly. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Ezekiel says, the word of the Lord came to me. He is a prophet. You would expect the word of the Lord to come to him. At the same time, we believe that not only did the word of the Lord come to Ezekiel, the word of the Lord came to the people of Israel, and the word of the Lord comes to you today and each day. The Lord is speaking to you. 
to us, to all people. If this is a little parable or proverb that Ezekiel quotes when he says, parents eating sour grapes and becoming sour in heart and mind really means that they are turning from God and that is souring their lives. And then that saying goes on about the children's teeth set on edge. In other words, the children are not punished by God for their parents' sins. A big teaching by Ezekiel as revealed from God. Rather, the children can receive, all of us can receive a new heart and spirit and not be soured by life. Are there times in life when we feel soured by life? In this passage, it means that we feel far away from God or that we feel a little sorrow in our lives. It could be because of things happening or not happening, but that sourness is something to pay attention to because it speaks of our spiritual well-being. Ezekiel's message comes to us saying, when and if sour, when and if losing hope, turn to the Lord and live. So this is really a lament from Ezekiel in this lesson. And I hear that lament in some of our contemporary music sometimes, songwriters and poets. For example, this song, I'm not singing it, just the lyric, and I quote, life goes on long after the thrill of living is gone. That's John Mellencamp. When I hear that, I'm, I'm stopped in my tracks. Because that's a word from God. Maybe he didn't mean it that way, but the Holy Spirit can use words not meant in a certain way to touch us. There's another one I've heard that I'm struck by, and I quote, Everybody dies, not everybody lives. Aubrey Drake Graham. A deep thought coming to us in music. I take that to mean that, well, we will die. But what will the fullness of our life look like? Will we we go through and and be too troubled in the gift of our lives? Or or will great tragedies surround us and we, we won't know where to turn? And I think that what these musicians are saying is what Ezekiel says. When we sour in heart and mind, we are not living as fully as God hopes we would live. And there is a remedy. Turn to God. In this lesson also, Ezekiel is asking, getting a question about God's unfairness. Um, They feel like the way of the Lord is unfair. And Ezekiel says, well, if indeed, if fair means equal, the people might have a point. But God is not paying unrighteousness and wickedness only with death, but actually with a call to turn and live. The passage says God does not rejoice when someone dies, or God does not rejoice when in turning away someone is not living as fully as they can. So, Ezekiel is saying, the grace and love of God is poured upon us all. God is giving mercy abundantly, deeply, and focused on the goodness of God stretching out to each of us, all people, everywhere. It is true, even in the face of inequality, in the, even in the face of earthquakes or hurricanes or a war, a number of wars, even when the color of skin or the sexual orientation of a person can cause them to be judged or demeaned, God is giving blessings. It takes real faith to recognize God's blessings in a war in Ukraine. 
It takes real faith to recognize God's blessings in flooding or earthquake. But it is possible, and it is who we are called to be. God again says through Ezekiel, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone. And the answer is turn to God and live. That's an open door. That's a welcomed invitation. That's a a deep sign of the goodness and love of Almighty God. Through the words of Ezekiel, God is giving people now and then a second chance, a new opportunity, another calling, a calling to turn to God, receive a new heart and spirit and truly live. Not soured by life, but have the mind of Christ. In Philippians, we read about the mind of Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus makes sour lives and teeth on edge renewed, hopeful, healed, ready to be respectful and kind to each other and all people because the future is secure. It may not look that way every day, but the future has been and is secured in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. A few years ago, I finished cutting the grass at our home on a Saturday afternoon, finishing in the backyard, and I I was kind of in a hurry because I wanted to get done, and I had, at that time, I had a service in the church I was at at 5 o'clock on Saturday. It surely shortens a Saturday when there's a service at 5. So I wanted to get that yard cut. It was Saturday afternoon. And I heard a word of the Lord to me, just like the word of the Lord comes to you. So I'm not telling you something you haven't experienced. And what I heard from the Lord was pause, stop, set up three chairs. I stopped, I cleaned those chairs off, I set them up in a triangle, and the message that I heard from those words that were hard to put into words really, was those chairs are for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I heard the the words, come and sit with us. Sit with us. Sit with us for a moment. And so I sat there on that beautiful afternoon in some shade, and then I thought, I can't linger here i got to get this yard cut. I have people waiting at the church. You can't expect me. Or can you? So I said I have too much to do. To sit. And I got up and left. I did not stay. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit called me to sit. And although I did for a few minutes, I didn't stay. What got in the way was too much to do. So that kind of puts me in the category of those moms and dads that Ezekiel is talking to who who are dealing with those sour grapes. In the months and years since that day, Whenever I look in the corner of the yard, there are the three chairs, although I've added a fourth chair now. Um, My wife wondered, what are you doing setting chairs up in this corner of the yard? Is there a party I don't know about? And usually we would not surprise each other with a party, but I said, yeah, there is a party, and I didn't plan it. And you're invited. Anytime we're invited. The party, the call to sit and listen and be formed by God. And I looked at those chairs this morning. I didn't sit, they were wet. Um, 
but now I am more attuned to those chairs and more attuned to the voice of God and more attuned to taking time to sit there. And if I can't sit there and just see those chairs, ah, I feel a spacious openness rather than a binding. My experience of the tempter is that it gets tight and I breathe and it just seems like there's too much pressure, but the Holy Spirit opens that up and there's a spacious openness. So when I sit there, I feel that openness. You might say three chairs. Um, it may happen to you in a much different way. Again, for me, entering this place of worship and just looking or sitting in a pew is a moment with God. A chair on the street or a bus stop chair it seems to me like an invitation from God to sit with God and, and listen and be sent out renewed and refreshed. In the same way, with or without three or four chairs in the yard, God is calling you to sit with God, the Trinity, to linger, to rest, to listen, to be formed, to be healed, to be sent, and not to be sour, but kind and loving. Whether we sit or not, God will continue to call. God will continue to empty God's self and lovingly call us to sit and be renewed to live. Those moments with God that you spend or I spend in prayerful listening are life enhancing and forming. This invitation to sit with God shouldn't make us feel guilty. It's not a judgment. It's pure grace. No condemnation. If you're too busy today and you can't sit, God says, I love you. Oh, but when we can sit, oh, then, then we feel the love. And maybe even as we rush around, we feel the love. The word of God comes to us in Matthew 21 when the chief priests and elders question Jesus about his authority to do what he is doing. What's he doing? Well, he's healing, he's teaching, he's giving life, he's setting free, he's embodying love and grace. They're upset that he's doing that. Authority for Jesus, who has all authority on heaven and earth, is to give that authority away, to empty himself of power, to serve and die and be raised as Savior and life giver to all people. And then we have this parable of the man who had two sons. I'm going to change the parable a little bit. But to the first son, he said, come and sit with me. And the first son said, I will not. Dad, I won't sit with you. But he repented and came back and sat later. The other son had, the, had that son, uh, had a second son. And to the second son said, sit with me. And that son said, I will, but didn't show up. Wow. That emptiness of not showing up. And Jesus says, which one? To the will of God the Father. And Jesus says, yes, the one who at least repented and came and sat. Or in the parable, went to the vineyard. Jesus says, those who think they are righteous and good will never sit with God. Only those tax collectors, sinners, refugees, people who recognize their need and repent will take the time to sit with God. This parable grounds authority in listening to God, discerning God, following God, saying yes to God's will for your life. Authority does not come from listening only to ourselves. Authority does not come from listening to those who tell us what we want to hear. Authority does not come nor exist in those who do not speak and live the truth. Authority comes from God. And you can see and feel the urgency of the call to stop and listen.
In fact, the whole creation depends on those who will stop and listen to God. As we hear God's calling to us to sit with God in the midst of our hectic lives, I'm, this is about me too. I hope you hear, I'm addressing myself. May we be humble enough to say yes and sit, that we may be formed and renewed, or kneel, be formed and renewed to serve each other and all people, to treat each other with kindness and love, respect and mercy, and to work for justice and peace in all the earth. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of being the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, for creation, and all the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church and for all people. Almighty God, we hear your call to stop and to listen. And we know that call to listen and to pray and to be with you and open to how close you are is based on your deep love for each of us, all people and all creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts looking to serve the needs of others. We pray for our government, that it can function for the good of all citizens, that all may be cared for. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers, people who are sick or suffering in any way. We remember Carolyn Caldwell, Nancy Arnold, and Carson Benner, and all who are listed on our prayer concerns list. Give them consolation, encouragement, and healing. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel and peace in your garden. Bring peace to the Ukraine, to Niger, the Sudan, Myanmar, to Palestine, and Israel and all places where your children are not at ease or at peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks and pray for those with birthdays and anniversaries, for Lou Arnold and Melissa Hickson and Stephanie Lowe, Macy Saylor and Addie Gear, Molly McClure, Steve Lowe, and for Amber and John Holman. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of the resurrection, as together we remember and give thanks for the life and witness of faith of our brother Ray Landis and pray for Donna and his family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts 
trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Share a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring you gifts, your gifts, to this table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Who comes in? 
Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You visited Hagar at the spring in the wilderness of Shur, blessing her with a multitude of descendants. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup make of us the body of your Son in the world. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. Thanks be to God. Amen. given for you. This is the body of Christ given.
Jesus and his precious blood strengthen and keep you in true faith to everlasting life. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food and you send us to gather the world to your banquet where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.